Hello, grade tens. Welcome back to another financial math exam past paper question video with me, Miss Martins. If you haven't joined my YouTube family yet, if you haven't clicked subscribe, please do so now if I've helped you in any way with any of my videos. And then I will continue to make many, many more. I hope to do that in the future for all of you. So let's jump right in to the following questions. We will be doing this in this video, all of these questions. So let's go. As a reminder, I've linked the paper down below so you can do it with me. Pause the video and unpause to mark and check your work. So the question says that we can buy a Samsung J5, a cell phone, for only 229 Rand per month. So this is what we will be paying every single month for the cell phone. We have 24 months to pay. No deposit is required. First question is very, very simple. It's only worth one mark. Calculate the total amount to be paid over the 24 month period. So we pay 229 for one month and we have 24 months in total. So times 24 and we get a total value of 5496. That is the total amount that we will be paying over the 24 month period period okay now it says the monthly installment this is basically the monthly installment 229 per month is calculated on a higher purchase agreement now remember we discussed in previous videos that higher purchase uses simple interest it is a short-term loan and this charges interest of 7.5 percent per annum on the cash price of a cell phone this question says show that the price of the cell phone is this amount over here 4779,13 so essentially what we have just calculated in the previous question using the monthly installments or monthly repayments is the total final amount after interest has been added so this amount over here includes interest to be paid back on the cell phone so essentially what we have calculated over here is my a it is my final or my accumulated amount including interest what the question wants me to do is to calculate and therefore prove that the price of the cell phone is this amount over here they basically want me to calculate p the starting amount, the initial price of the cell phone without interest being added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the simple interest formula, which looks like this. A has been given or we calculated in the previous question, 5496. P is what we are looking for. The initial price of the cell phone, the starting price, the principal amount, 1 plus I. I is the interest rate and it's 7.5%. So we go 7.5 divided by 100 because it's percentage we divide by 100. PA means per annum and there are how many years in total? Now N is always number of years. Okay, in this formula, N is number of years. We know that it's 24 months. There's 12 months in one year. So 24 divided by 12, that gives me two years. So we're going to say times two. When I do this, remember, I'm looking for P. I'm solving for P. I want to get P alone. Now, how do we get P alone? P is being multiplied by the bracket. So to get P alone, we need to do inverse operations. Because it's being multiplied by the bracket on this side, we have to divide by the bracket. So it's 5496 divided by the brackets. That's what you type into your calculator. And what you end up getting is exactly the amount that the question asked us to show. They said, show the price of the cell phone is this. In other words, show that the starting amount of the cell phone before we add interest is this. And that's exactly what we did over there. 7.3 wants to know the total interest paid over the period of 24 months if we buy with the higher purchase agreement. So we have two amounts at the moment. What we have is the amount we just calculated, which we said is basically P, the starting amount, and that is this one over here. And then we also have the final amount, the after amount, the accumulated amount based on the advert. Once they've obviously added interest, you see that amount is bigger than the other one. So it's 5496. And then essentially, why are these amounts different? These amounts are different because we're paying interest. What that means is in order to calculate the amount of interest, we say A minus P. And using A minus P is always another way that we can use to calculate the amount of interest. Our next question 7.4 says, 
we are going to insure the cell phone and it says we're going to insure it at 11.5 percent pa of the cash price now pa remember means per annum per year the sentence is very important i'll come back to it in a second it says the total insurance is then calculated they split it up over the 24 months remember that's the total period it is then added to the monthly installment now you can recall from the little ad that we gave you that the original monthly installment based on the ad is 229 per month 229 that's the original monthly installment they want me to calculate the new monthly installment so the new monthly installment will be the original monthly installment plus the amount of insurance paid per month now this is where the interpretation of the question is very important they say that the cell phone is insured at 11.5 percent per annum so basically we got 11.5 percent of the cash price remember the cash price was this amount over here or they gave it to us in the question this is the amount of insurance per annum or per year but remember we are not working with years we are working with monthly installments so what we do is we take the total amount of insurance that we'll be paying in one year and how do i know that it's in one year because pa means per annum per one year and we divide it by 12 why are we dividing by 12? Because there's 12 months in one year. And that is the amount of insurance that needs to be paid every single month. Therefore, to get the new monthly installments, we add the original monthly installment plus the insurance amounts and we get 274 comma now my calculator says 7999. We round off to two decimal places, so it'll be 80. Now, a lot of students may have misinterpreted the question because they say the total insurance is calculated, then split up over 24 months. But remember that this over here, the insurance price is quoted per annum, so for one year. So what you could have also done is you could have said, okay, cool, if it's 11% per annum, I have two years, so you times it by two, and then the total amount of months over the two years is 24 months. But doing this, will end up giving you the exact same amount of monthly insurance as what I got originally over here. And this is just indicating where you would get your marks. And then our final question says the cost of the cell phone is subject to inflation. Okay, now you should know what inflation is, but if you forgot, remember it's the steady increase in the price of things that we buy, goods and services over time over years throughout our economy okay that's what inflation is and you should know you should remember that inflation we use compound interest not simple interest so the cost of the cell phone remember the original cost price was four seven seven nine comma one three but now because of inflation it increased to five thousand one hundred and how many years did it take to do that two years so in is two now we got two amounts here this is basically your initial amount think of it as your p amount your principal amount your starting amount then after two years the price increased it becomes my final amount my accumulated amount took two years n is two n is number of years they want me to calculate the annual inflation rate they are looking for i the interest rate essentially so those are my variables so remember we have to use the compound interest formula which is this formula over here so you write your formula you substitute in what you know a is 5100 p is 4779,13 that was given in the question it's the original cash price we got one plus I is what I'm looking for and N is 2. Now, a lot of students will end up struggling to isolate the variable that we're looking for to get I by itself. But you can already take comfort in the fact that writing and using the correct formula and substituting correctly gives you two out of the four marks according to this memo. But how do we get I by itself? Now, I is inside the bracket. So we need to isolate I. The first thing that makes sense to get rid of is this number over here. So how do I get rid of this number? It is being multiplied by the bracket. What's the inverse operation of multiply? 
divide. So essentially, we divide both sides of the equation by this number over here. So we go 5,100 divided by 4779,13. And on this side, if we divide this side by that number, this number over here, it gets rid of that number they're going to cancel out. So we'll just be left with the bracket. We can't get rid of the bracket and the square yet. We haven't dealt with that yet. So what I've done is I've just divided these two numbers and you get this number over here. Now we still need to get i by itself, but it is trapped inside a bracket that is being squared. How do I get rid of the square? That's my next step. I have to square root. We square root both sides of the equation. Now remember grade tens, if we square root the right hand side of the equation, if you square root a square, what ends up happening is the square and the square root end up canceling each other out. So we'll just be left with one plus i. If we square root this side, we get the following answer. Don't round off yet. We're not done with the question. Now, i is still not by itself. It is attached to the one by addition, plus one. What's the inverse of plus one? Yep, we have to minus one. When we minus one, what we get on the left-hand side is zero comma zero three three, and it goes on. Don't round off yet. But remember what we have discussed before, that I is an interest rate. And technically... What i is equal to, remember we usually take i divided by 100 because it's a percentage. So we need to multiply this by 100 to get i the percentage. And i get 3,30%. Now, of course, all these intermediate steps are not necessary to be shown. I'm showing it in a lot of detail to help people that don't know how to get to the answer, but you do need to show me some sort of simplification, and then I would like to see your final answer. Here's how marks were awarded in this particular memo. I really hope this paper was helpful for you. Please let me know what else you'd like to see. Check out the links for more past paper questions. Subscribe for more and I can't wait to see you again very soon. Bye everybody.